Hey everybody, hope you're all right there. Uh, today, just want to help us explain the concept of how to interpret the uh, Gibbs free energy graphs. So, let's say you have two components, component one and component two, and you see this excess Gibbs free energy uh, as the y-axis and the molar fraction of one of the components as the x-axis. And probably you might see something like this. Let's draw this here. Yeah. Or sometimes you might even see this. So you have G, the excess gives free energy here. And so what does it mean to have positive or negative excess gives free energy? So what does excess gives free energy less than zero? or excess gets free energy more than zero mean. So we know that the gets free energy of a solution gets free energy of a solution equals the gets free energy of an ideal solution plus excess gets free energy, right? That's a whole lot of concepts, right? So let's just recap them and break it down. Let's say you have a change from state 1 to state 2. You have a change here. So if your delta G is less than 0, this means it's spontaneous. So as you can see, when many solutions mix, let's say, ethanol and water. So you have a pure ethanol, pure water, and you mix them. You mix them here. Well, you, we see it's spontaneous, right? And most most thing most mixtures when you mix two fluids, there, there will be spontaneous mixing. So you can infer that this delta G of this process or delta G of the mixing. Uh, let's do it here. Delta G of the mixing is less than zero. For since we can see that the process itself is spontaneous. Of course, the only time that it kind of doesn't work, as we all know, is when you try to mix oil and water, which doesn't really happen, so this is probably not the case. But for other fluids, uh, fluid mixture, let's say benzene toluene, benzene toluene, oxygen, nitrogen, etc, etc. You see that the Gibbs free energy of mixing is less than zero. Now, how do you measure or how do you benchmark how well something mixes? Well, just to recap, we have something called the ideal solution. And what's the ideal solution? I mean, you should be knowing this if you're already looking at Gibbs, excess Gibbs free energy. But just to recap, an ideal solution is any kind of solution that mixes like an ideal gas, right? So you have oxygen and nitrogen. If we mix them at uh, room temperature and pressure, we can observe that there's no volume change and there's no heat release, right? So this is, if a mixture mixes in this uh, kind of sense, like delta V equals zero, delta H equals zero, if it's, that's the case, then the, the mixture is called to be ideal. It's known as ideal, right? So what is an example of an ideal solution that doesn't involve gases? So we have something like benzene and toluene and hexane, which is C6. Yeah, C6H14 and heptane, which is a C7. So you have... Uh, you have compounds like these, they will mix very ideally. And why is that? Let's say you have benzene here. A benzene a pure solution. Right? So I'm not drawing it accurately yeah, or to scale. But I can see the interactions between each of these uh, benzene molecules. They are basically van der Waals. Van der Waals interaction, right? And the same goes for toluene. So 
So these are van der Waal interactions. Now when you mix them, if you're going to mix them, like so, I mean, the most of the new interactions uh, that are formed they are also basically van der Waal interactions. So before mixing and after mixing, the interactions are roughly the same, right? So there's on, on average no heat uh, release or absorb and the change in volume is zero. This is very similar to an ideal gas. Okay, I was saying that if your you have a mixture of benzene and toluene. So it's toluene, is benzene. I mean, before and after mixing, the interactions are roughly the same. Delta H equals zero. Delta H of mixing and delta V of mixing equals to zero, right? And let's say you have delta G of mixing and X1, right? The energy of mixing against X1, and let's say more fraction of benzene is X1 and toluene in X2. Delta G of mixing as X1 increases will be something like that, something like a parabola, right? So let's just call this ideal solution. So delta G mixing for the ideal solution, right? Now let's say you have uh, ethanol water. Now, where, what will happen on the graph? You register something like that. And finally, for acetone and chloroform, all right, you do something like that. So the delta G is more negative. Acetone, chloroform. This is ETOH, ethanol and water. Ethanol and water. So what is this saying? So compared to an ideal solution, the delta G of mixing for ethanol and water is less negative than the ideal solution. See? And for acetone chloroform, the delta G of mixing is more negative than the ideal solution, which is the center one, right? So if you're taking excess Gibbs free energy here, this is GE, excess Gibbs free energy less than zero for acetone chloroform system, and GE more than zero for ethanol water system. If a Gibbs free energy of mixing is more negative, we can say it's more spontaneous. So in a sense, you can intuitively say it mixes better. What it means is for excess Gibbs free energy more than zero, doesn't mix as well. This means it doesn't mix as well as ideal solution. All right? And GE more than zero, or less than zero, sorry, mixes better then I do solution. All right, so that's basically what it means. And just to help you understand why this is the case, let's say you have the delta G, or rather excess Gibbs free energy, more than zero case. So that is water ethanol. So again, we have water, right? Then we have hydrogen bonds between the water. Between each water molecule, there'll be like hydrogen bonds there. And for ethanol, so you have some lone pairs there. Right? I'm just drawing stuff out. So you have van der Waals interaction, which is quite weak. And we have hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds and van der Waals interactions. So if you mix them, Okay, the water will like, or rather, the water will like the polar part of the ethanol. 
let's put another one here. So you can see the hydrogen bonds here, but water will not like this part. Water will not like the non-polar parts of the ethanol. So compared to the pure solution, the bonds kind of change. But look at water. Water is like almost hydrogen bonds all the way. And now it has to deal with some some uh, non-polar stuff, which is like water and oil. Water and oil doesn't mix so well. And this part, this part, the non-polar part is like the oil. So water is mixing with half water, half oil, which is not as good. So that's why it doesn't mix as well. All right? So excess, sorry. Excess gets free energy more than zero. Now we have the acetone and chloroform case where excess gives free energy less than zero. So we have Cl, Cl, Cl. And this is chloroform, yeah? And acetone will be something like this. CH3, CH3. All right? So if you know your chemistry, you know that this is partially negative, this is partially positive, and this will be partially negative, this will be partially positive, right? So, so the chloroform molecules, I'm not going to draw everything out, right? You can imagine, yes, there is some polar interaction between these molecules because of the positives and negatives, I can see it is not as strong. Okay, it's not that strong. It's a polar interaction. All right, plus some van der Waal forces, and likewise for acetone. All right. So there will be some polar interactions between the two plus van der Waal forces. Okay? Now what happens when you mix the two? Yeah, something quite interesting happening. So this is a delta positive, delta, relatively delta negative part. Well, most of it is at the chlorines, but yeah, you can just call this whole bunch delta negative, yeah? So what happens is you have this acetone, right? The acetone has this oxygen which is slightly negative and this is slightly positive. And this can form a very strong polar interaction. It's not quite a hydrogen bond, quite, not quite a hydrogen bond, but it is a lot stronger than what you have here. All right, so let's draw another one here, CH3, 2. It's not quite a hydrogen bond. I can see the interactions here, these new interactions are a lot stronger than what you had before. So in a, in a sense, you can say these two fluids, they mix very well as compared to the ideal solution, right? So that's why Git3 Excess gets free energy less than zero, means mixes very well.